Hello to everyone on the internet. It is currently Tuesday, December 18th. I am Nathan of Washington, and you are watching The Unglobalist. And this is the news. Alright, so tyranny in Belgium. As, fe as peaceful. Tyranny in Belgium as peaceful protesters get gassed. The protesters showed no signs of uh, any sort of violent intent. They were merely making it clear that globalism is bad for business. You know, they were just protesting globalism and saying, hey, you know, cut it out. But of course, the uh, mainstream media worldwide, especially in America, just completely blacked out on it and didn't even say nothing about it. Surprise, surprise. I will now read you some statistics from the article. As there are some pretty solid statistics here that should be reflected on. <clears throat> it has to do with migration, of course. This is the final proof you will ever need of uh, something at least vaguely resembling the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory. Department of Economic and Social Affairs Popula Population Division. I will read everything that's underlined in red. Uh, United Nations projections indicate that over the next 50 years the populations of virtually all countries of Europe as well as Japan will face population decline and population aging. Require comprehensive programs relating to international migration. Replacement migration to the international migration that a country would need to offset population decline. In order to keep the total population constant at the level 47.4 million migrants would be necessary between 2000 and 2050. An average of, of 949,000 migrants per year. It would, in fact, be necessary to have 79.6 million migrants between 1995 and 2050, an average of 1.4 million migrants per year. By 2050, out of a, t of a total population uh, of 418.5 million post-1995 immigrants and their descendants would be 107.7 million, or 25.7%. United States of America. 760,000 migrants per year between 1995 and 2050 for a total of uh, 41,800,000. In short, the UN wants us to fit 4 billion people into Europe and UK and pass laws to imprison anyone who dares to go against their agenda. It would seem because there was part of the migration pact that suggested criticism of the pact should be treated as hate speech and punished. Yeah, they're trying to... They're trying to force native populations of countries to become ethnically mixed. And why? So they can create that glorious globalist utopia, dude. Totally. By force, of course. Because it always involves force and violating other people's rights. Always. In this case, it's more political force than military force. Just using various tricks to get, to get le legislation passed. Yeah, they were gassing the peaceful protesters in order to fight for their stupid globalism. It's going to tear the world apart. Either that or it's going to turn the entire Earth into the Middle East. The BBC wants to prove that Russia caused the Yellow Vests. 
Of course. Blame everything on Russia. Kind of got to wonder what Putin might think. I really wonder what what Putin's opinion is of the whole situation about uh, or what he would have to say about people always blaming Russia for all their problems. Someone starts a riot, blame it on Russia. The person you didn't want in office wins, blame it on Russia. I honestly wonder what he thinks of it. Uh, British Broadcasting Company? More like brain-dead, banal, and crazy. The BBC editing board is basically out for blood. And, if, uh, you know, they really want to try and pin it on someone so they don't have to admit, admit that France and uh, the EU fucked up. The French also launched an invest a similar investigation into a, into a Russian connection. Of course, as always, they want to paint Russia as this super villain, uh, this super villain politistate that uh, you know is always scheming, always plotting. It's ridiculous. If they were always on interfering with other countries, they'd never have time to take care of their own. It's absurd. Bottom line is liberal ideology, far left liberal ideology has basically rotted all brains. Their brains have just been completely rotted and the only thing that's left is the propaganda. That's what I say. BBC in fact stands for brain dead, banal, and crazy. They just can't stand reality because reality gets in the way of what they want. It's a pipe dream, and they're married to it. Uh, 62 ISIS members killed over the weekend due to U.S. airstrikes from Djibouti. <laughs> That's the, the most perfect name for a country ever, Djibouti. Hey, Djibouti! It's Djibouti. Yo, Djibouti. Yeah, apparently we actually made a successful strike on ISIS for once. Uh, so Merry Christmas, because that's over the, you know, sort of the Christmas season. There's your present. 62 dead ISIS folk. Uh, uh, Yer Netanyahu says that there will be no peace until either the Jews or Muslims leave. And of course the Jews won't be leaving. The so-called Holy Land means a lot to both of them, both to the Jews and to the Muslims. It means so much to them. It is the birthplace of all three heads of the Abrahamic Cerberus. But the fighting and the insanity. I'm telling you, there's just something up with that Middle East. I don't know what. But it almost seems like living in the Middle East seems to drive people insane and cause them to behave like animals. Just turns them, something about it just turns them savage. I, I honestly think that's why they act the way they do. There's no other explanation that I can think of. There's something about the place, dude. Uh, 24,000 people in the United Kingdom are now homeless and sleeping through this Christmas season. Yeah. A record 24,000 homeless people in the UK. Naturally, they're going to try to blame that on uh, capitalism, but we all know the real reason. Taxation, bankruptcy, things costing too much money due to inflation. In other words, political incompetency. The political class will always blame everything but themselves. That's what they do. And their favorite thing is Russia.
British royal hebophilia. Prince Andrew in a photo with an underage prostitute. About 16, 17, something like that. People overstretch and overuse the term pedophilia and or pedophile. A pedophile refers to someone who is attracted to uh, prepubescent features. The term for someone who is attracted to teenagers is hebophilia. Completely different category. In the, in the United States, it's mostly just due to result of one overarching term used in legalism. Everything over here is influenced by legalism. It's a completely different phenomenon. No, I don't think that adults should have sex with teenagers. But at the same time, we cannot pretend that it is anywhere near as bad as adults having sex with uh, little prepubescent kids. Teenagers have sex with each other all the time. And they're, mo for the most part, physically mature enough that they can deal with, you know, sexuality. Not as easily as an adult could, but they still can. So it's nowhere near as bad. But that's what happens when you live under legalism. Still a problem, though. Still a problem. Mind you, if the teenager uh, deliberately seeked it out, did it all their own, statutory rape is bullshit, alright? Statutory rape is bullshit. Just because you're under a certain age does not magically transform a yes into a no, alright? Statutory rape is not rape, by very definition. That's legalism. That's stupid. The chick in the photo was smiling, she was friendly with him, it was obvious that she was consenting. Sure, it may not be moral, and I would agree that it's probably not moral, but it's about as far from rape as you can get. And for our final story, uh, Johnson & Johnson admit that they knew that their talcum powder had asbestos in its formula, which has been labeled as a carcinogen. Truth be known, they act like everything causes cancer. Do we really know the real cause? Or are we just finding things uh, connected to cases of people having cancer and then just saying, oh, hmm, these two people have this thing in common. I'm just saying so many different things are being blamed for cancer, it's a wonder we're not dead already. You really gotta wonder. Mind you, asbestos is still not a, a good thing. As asbestos has been known to cause lung disease. The stuff gets in your lung and causes lung uh, stuff gets in your lungs and causes lung damage, which I would argue is actually worse than cancer. Cancer is treatable, lung damage not so much. There's really nothing they can do about lung damage. That's the real danger from smoking too. Screw lung cancer. You can survive lung cancer. You can't survive COPD. It's debatable whether or not uh, asbestos really causes any harm. Personally, I think they don't really know the actual cause of cancer, and they're just desperately trying to find it and looking in all the wrong places. That's what it looks like to me. Just because someone went to school for a few years and got a, fa got a fancy uh, degree doesn't mean they actually know what they're doing. In fact, most of the time, People who get an official college education are taught to think and operate in a very small box. Essentially, they're being taught to, uh, instead of looking for what actually works, 
they instead teach them to stick to this thing we taught you because we know it works. So that way, instead of looking for what works, you just assume that what you're already doing works. In other words, the educated fool. I think if you want to find the real cause of cancer, you need to learn to think outside the box. But anyway, that's it for the Unglobalist today, folks. I'm out.